There it goes. Uh, sorry the camera cut out the other day. The battery went dead on it. But anyway, um, getting ready to put pistons in here. Um, I think about the only thing you missed. Uh, I think I just told about this uh, grease that I put on the piston pin and everything when I put it in there. I use this, you know, I can get, get this stuff at Napa. It's called Motor Assembly Number 105. Um, I put it on the bearings, you know, cam bushings, gears, uh, just about everything in the engine. The only thing I don't use it on is the rings when I'm sliding the um, piston into the bore. Um, I use regular engine oil for that. Um, but it works good, and anytime uh, I also use it on the oil pump when I put the oil pump up in there. Um, I always fill the gears with this grease, and that kind of helps prime it uh, to start out so it gets su starts sucking oil faster. This motor won't be a problem because the oil, uh, oil pump's always submerged in oil. That's down on the very bottom of the crankcase, but I went ahead and did it anyways. But I'm going to show you. We'll go ahead and uh, put the uh, piston in here. Make sure the rings don't get lined up here. I think the rings do turn in the uh, whenever you die. I probably probably move some when they're going around and around, but the chances of them lining themselves up are like winning the lottery ten times probably. I don't really don't know what the chances are, but it just seemed like a good analogy. Um, It. And it's pretty lightweight grease here. You gotta shake it up a little bit because sometimes the oil will separate, especially when it's this hot out. I tell you, it's humid today. Uh, this is typical Illinois summer weather. Feels like it's about 105 just because the humidity is about 85 or 90 percent. It's about 85 degrees out. Um, this is usually what it's like to make hay in Illinois. We rarely have. Um, that like a couple weeks ago when we were making hay, it was, you know, dry and everything, especially for first cutting, that's really rare. You're getting on the third cutting, usually it's not too bad getting it up, but first and second sometimes can be pretty much a challenge, or most of the time it is, um, because, you know, it's really hot and humid and the wind's not moving much, and that's just typical central Illinois weather. Um... It's kind of an odd year this year, but I'd say probably five out of six years it would be this kind of weather when we're trying to do first and second cutting. Um, so that's why there's not much hay in Illinois, but just the way to just get used to it after a while. First week of the summer, it's always bad getting back into the east used to the humidity but after that you just get used to it and you just nah whatever you're just going to be a total sweating mess by the end of the day but that's just the way it is Oh, 
dirty. There we go. coated pretty good here kind of makes a mess but that's just the way it is I don't quite have a piston ring expander big enough for these pistons. I think my bigger or piston ring compressor on expander. Talked about the expander last time. I go up to four and three eighths, and I think this is a four and seven eighths bore. I'm not 100% positive, but I was looking at it, and if I'm real careful, I can think I can get my thing to work here. You gotta be kind of careful when you're doing this. You can break rings driving it in. And this is another reason to put lots of oil on stuff because this just slides to get, it just makes your life easier doing it this way. Get the dead blow hammer, soft hammer here. Oh, that was well, that was easy. Why not here the next? Mac Tools makes this set of ring expanders, and they're good for most you know automobiles. It'd be fine, but. Uh, for tractors, sometimes you get into stuff a little too big. Okay, I got the far side back on the crank. Uh oh, about to jump onto this next ring here. It'd be easier if it was wider and it would catch all the rings at once, but can't do that.
There we go. Gotta be pretty gentle with this stuff. There's, right, now we're to the last ring here. I haven't cracked a ring doing this either, but it is possible. That really sucks to. That really sucks to crack a ring. And there is the rod. These are going in pretty easy. Sometimes they don't slide into the bore this nice. There we go. There's all of them in. Grease on here. I gotta take my glasses off so I can see down in. All right, got the uh, other piston in there, up in there. Realized I forgot to plastic gauge it, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the other piston in while I'm waiting for Dad. Got it assembled already. I'm gonna put it in while I'm waiting for Dad to get back from town with the plastic gauge. All right, guys, working on the old beer again today. Um, got some plastic gauge. Check clearance in the bearings. This will be one to four thousandths on these rod bearings. And get the thing open. Is it pizza? Little bugger. There we go. It's just a little wax, I think they're wax. Little strip here, you just lay it on the bearing like so. A little grease on there, kind of hold it in place. <clears throat> now this red stuff, uh, I can measure from two to six thousandths in bearings clearance, and this green stuff can measure one to three thousandths in bearing clearance. Rod number up. Let's see. Had a party in here the other day for the Fourth of July. I got the hay rack, had food and everything on it. Normally it's outside, but a chance of rain, so got it in the shed. Nuts are still there.
Well, probably with the short socket. I can't remember what all else I got to put in this video of the deer that I filmed about a week and a half ago. So I'll do this. Uh, that'll be it for this. And then uh, make another video later of putting that clutch together or something. Get about 40 first, and then uh, I'll take it up 75. Snug them up here first. There's 75. There's that. Normally do the same thing on a regular engine on the main bearings too, but because these are different style, I can't do that. Because they're more like that like cam bushing. My finger didn't feel very good. Mashed it and left it on that thing. Crap. Well, not what I was wanting to happen. Now they put this on here, these little marks, and it tells you however wide this strip gets mashed. That's what it is. With the bang, we get a flashlight. Here's the little strip.
Looks like it mashed it. Down to two thousandths bearing clearance, which specs one to four, so that'll be all right. But you just line that little mark up, and it lined it up with the biggest red one, so it's two thousandths of an inch. Um, so I think that's about it. Um, let's say check the plastic gauge bearings and put the pistons in. I think that's what I got in the rest of my video that I'm going to put with this. Um, but I'll do some more filming later today, but it'll be in a different video. But anyway, thanks for watching.